Babylon the Great is falling. Giving all praise to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai Basham Kakodash. Um, right now we're in, as of last night, we are in the uh, new moon. And uh, we are also in the uh, the trumpets, the memorial blowing of the trumpets, which is a celebration of all the new moons of the year. This would be the top new moon, if you will. Anyway, so we're in the Sabbath, new Sabbath cycle. As of uh, 9 6 or September 6, 2021, the year of the coming of the hastening of the coming of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's when the, the new moon came in. So I was going, I was going to go into Revelation 18, one of my favorite uh, chapters, and I uh, came across a video that Apostle Orion Lob was doing entitled uh, The Mistress Of, I believe. You can go to that. And he was going into uh, Revelation 18 as I was even thinking about it. He said I want to do a video on it. I'm not going to go through the whole breakdown. I might come back and do that. You know, if people want, want, to, uh, want to understand other parts of, uh, of verses of Revelation 18, you can come on the comment board. Anyway, it's a fairly simple breakdown, but it's uh, straight and to the point. That's why I love this chapter, and I meditate on it quite a bit, because this is the actual end of Esau's system. Anyway, it, I'm going kind to of, kind of jump around. Anyway, it says the first verse, And after these uh, things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, has become the habitation of devils. Now, High Priest Ariya used to teach that this is when... um. Esau, you know, 14, 15, 1600s, when they came over here and they took down Gad, that's when these devils came in. That's not talking about that. And it never sat with me when um, the high, high priest Ariel taught that. What this is talking about is when this system goes down, when the missiles hit, when the angels come, when the Lord, Michael, the archangels, and an innumerable amount of angels come and destroy this place, Babylon the Great. And uh, the, the deliverance will take place simultaneously while this place is being destroyed. You know, you had a couple people come on on my one of my videos a couple of my videos asking about the the rapture before the trip great tribulation well this rapture if you will which is not even biblical that's a word that Esau came up with that's not rapture is not in the scriptures but rapture means to take to take away loosely translated and um so what they're saying is there's going to be a rat rapture, and then there's going to be a seven-year tribulation. Seven, there's not going to be no seven-year tribulation. The so-called rapture and the so-called tribulation is going to take place all at the same time. Concurrently is the word. Anyway, it says, uh, second verse, Revelation 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a, with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, 
So devils are talking about spirits, if you will. And the whole of every foul spirit, animal, uh, desert-like creatures, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Unclean bird is a scavenger. So if you go to any desert on the planet Earth and you put animals in the desert, you're going to get these same animals. These desert-like creatures. It says in the third verse, For all nations have drunk of the wine. Now, drunk of the wine of the wrath of a fornic fornication, it's not talking about actual wine. It's talking about her philosophy. When you go back like 2,000 years ago, you had Rome, which was an empire, and you had people that were taken over by that empire became Romanized during the time of the Maccabees and Antiochus Epiphanes you had our people become Greeks or Greek eyes for lack of a better way of saying it well with America you become Americanized if you go around the world let's say you go to Egypt to see the pyramids if you were to take a picture of the pyramids and you pan the camera behind you, you're going to see these American-based uh, businesses, especially the foods, the, the, the Burger Kings, the, uh, the McDonald's, the KFCs, the Arby's, these uh, big, franchise, uh, big franchises are all around the world. In Japan and China. So these people became Americanized as they be just like they became Romanized or Greekized. You know, you see, I, I remember one time, this was maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when um even before that, when China when the Chinese people became rich and the car of choice was a Buick which is not a rich man's car but they equate being wealthy with driving around in a Buick not a Lincoln or a uh, a Cadillac or a Mercedes or a Rolls Royce they believe the, the symbol you know for for opulence and and being rich as a Buick because a Buick is the so-called all-American car you know GMC, Ford, Chrysler anyway it says uh, third verse for all nations have drunk of the wine so the wine we know the wine represents the uh uh, the philosophy, the uh, the thinking of this place, which is America. You come into a lot of money, Taiwan, China, Hong Kong, Japan, different parts of Europe. You live that life. You 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 dress. Like you have a lot of these Japanese, Chinese, uh, these various nations. How do they dress? They don't dress in their former uh, garbs of, of the past. They dress like Americans. They wear suits and ties. They get the most expensive shoes that they can get. So they became Americanized. So they so they drunk the wine of the rat wrath of a fornication fornication when you look the word fornication up it really means adultery pornea which means adultery if you lay with a, a woman that's married to another man that's adultery if a woman that's not married lays with a man that is married that's not adultery and this is something these wacky tacky 
stupid ass Christians, guys like Vocab Malone. I remember when Vocab Malone and his motley crew was down there confronting us. A woman had walked by. And we looked. We didn't look at her in a sexual way. We just noticed a woman walked by and we looked. And I believe it was Vocab that said, you got to be careful. You know, that, that's, a, that's adultery. And I attempted to explain to this clown that adultery, when the Lord made that statement, you know, it, 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 it's sin and adultery to even look at a woman. Well, it's really talking about how can you commit adultery by looking at a woman, even laying with a woman that's not married? That's not adultery. Adultery takes place if a man is as a if a man and a woman is together, they dealing with each other. They're married. If you if you deal with that woman, you break wedlock. And the, and the penalty of that is um is the the, the de quick death. See you people in America, especially you Israelites. That's why I see why the Most High is going to take the majority of you Israelites out. Because you're all fucked up in the head and you're Americanized. That's why you got all out of, especially you, you uh, conscious people. You conscious people are all fucked up in the head. And no Israelite should give their time, give them the time of day. The fuck you giving them the time of day for, man? The hell with them people. The Most High is going to get them chipped and then he's going to dip them. He's going to chip them and dip them. Anyway, it says, uh, now fornication means to go to bed, a nation going to bed with another nation, meaning they have relations, meaning they do trade. You know, they're allies. And, and it says, it says for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of fornication. Now, how have they did that? It says for all nations. You might know only China and the Arab, certain Arab nation, not all of them. The Afghans and me. Bullshit. Bullshit, Mr. Ham Man. The Afghans made a treaty with Esau. The people of Iran, the people of Iraq, the African nations. How do we know this? Because they all, and they're going to come over, they, they're coming over here in another, what, week or two for the General Assembly at the UN, which is in America, which is in New York. And they all sit down and they all have their name plates. So that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's them coming together. And most of them are wearing suits. Some of them are starting to wear their, going back to their God, uh, gobs, their regalia. But a lot of them, some of them, most of them are wearing suits and ties. Except for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of, the, of a forn fornication. So the wine, they became drunk off of the wine, which is uh, the Americanization or the European Europeanization all the westernization of this system. That's why most of the times you'll see them wearing suits and ties. As if all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of a fornication, meaning they allied to, the, to these people. They make backdoor deals. I mean, I thought the, they're making a deal with the Taliban. I thought the Taliban, you know, was the worst uh, terrorist group out there. What the hell are you making a deal for them? Oh, they sat down with us and they're going to allow certain... Amer no, no, no. They, what, what happens behind the scenes? That's what you got to look for. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, the her is America, Babylon. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich 
through the abundance of her delicacies. So let's deal with the word merchants. Strong's G, 1713, Emperors, Emperors. Emperors, which means, uh, that's where you get the word emperor. And it really means command, but it also means, uh, like you have certain stores that are called a furniture, a rug emporium, which is another way of saying a uh, rug uh, merchant. But now when you go into when you go into that word it means uh one on a journey whether by sea or by land especially for trade a merchant as opposed to a retailer or petty tradesman a retailer or a petty um Macy's is a, is a retailer they get their merchandise from uh, the merchants on the other side of the world, mainly China, China, India. That's where they get their merchandise from. So it's not talking about some guy that owns a, a hardware store down his block. It's not even talking about Macy's because Macy's is a re retailer. A merchant is more of a a more of a, a wholesaler in the biggest sense. Because what the Chinese do when they come from the uttermost east to the west, they come in cargo cargo ships with a cargo. And there's a big mess over there now where the cargo's not coming in. Uh, Kamala Harris said, buy your Christmas gifts early because they're looking at the fact that you might not get these. Uh, like when you go to BJ's, in uh, Sam's Club or Costco's or Walmart or any of these major big box. Oh, hold up. Okay, this would be a part two. Anyway, uh, bear me for a minute. Anyway, let's come back. So now you understand why China, you know, the world looked down on China. You know, the rick rickshaw drivers and the, uh, uh, the, you know, China was looked look down, you know, farm, mostly farm, you know, agriculture, humble type people that even the uh, America used for the building of the w railroad from the east going to the west. And a lot of uh, Moabites had died in building... Um, helping to build a railroad system. They were basically slaves. So now you have, you know, this happened after the meeting with uh, Nixon back in, uh, I believe it was 72, with, uh, and if you look, you put in Nixon and uh, Mao, you got pictures of them shaking, you know, shaking, it, shaking hands and all that. And, uh, I'm trying to picture it in my mind. But anyway, when that happened, there was a great expansion in China for manufacturing because it was cheap, cheap labor. Now, when you go back to the 70s, mid-70s, you had a gas crisis in 73, and then you had uh, the Japanese imports coming to America. And the gas prices were 
went up high, sky high. I remember them going up like two dollars, and uh, uh, maybe a couple of months before that, the gas was like the regular gas, which was leaded, was uh, you know thirty five cents, thirty thirty cents. At one time, it was twenty five cents. And with that crisis, you had gas lines, and you if you had a a license plate that ended with an odd number, you come on an odd day, like on a Wednesday or Monday. And if it was an even number, you came on an even even day, maybe Tuesday, Thursday, or whatever. And they had gas. I remember they had these lines to get gas, and then gas went up, and people didn't complain too much because they needed that gas. Cause you had to wait on a long line, and that was during the time period where these uh, companies that you thought went out of business actually went on the other side of the world. All the major manufacturing companies, or the majority of them, are um, uh, what, how can you say? Uh, the majority of them are uh, over there, mainly in China, mainly in China. Those ships. Uh, coming coming back from uh, China. So it goes on to say, of the wrath of fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and, mer and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Now, when I clicked on Apostle Orion Lobb's uh, video, he, he, he was going through delicacies. Now, delicacies, it said these nations, mainly China, the super rich, you know, the new newfound wealth of the Chinese people, you had a, a maybe a poor Chinese boy from a poor family that became a, a billionaire so what they do is they live that luxurious life that abundant life it says and third verse and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through wax the merchants of the earth the other nations mainly china we're focusing on china uh merchant of earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies and then I'm gonna close on this I'll probably come back so I left off at the third verse to see what happens because I believe Apostle Ryan Lab had covered that but the spirit this is the spirit so Okay, let me listen to the word here. Strong's G, 4764, strenas, strenas. Strenas, which means excessive strength, which longs to break forth over strength, luxury, eager desire. You want something. You don't, you don't want just no regular car. You want the best. You know, you hit with Jake. Man, when Jake, um, this guy, I'll give you an example. And uh, Johanna Bar ran into him at a, um, what was that, Auto World or in, in um, Long Island, Long Island City. There's this big uh, car dealership. I think it's called Auto World or something like that. He used to have commercials. But I've been there a couple of times, and they, you get lost in there. There's so many cars. There's literally thousands of cars in the lot you got the new cars you got the pre-owned you got the used so this guy Johnson he was a light heavyweight and he had I believe he had knocked out he had knocked out uh uh Roy Jones remember when Roy Jones was getting knocked out left and right after Tarver knocked him out he had a he had a fight with uh uh Johnson which was a Benjaminite had a thick uh Benjaminite accent and he knocked out Roy Jones on a Saturday night. And that Monday morning, he was, he was at the Auto World or whatever the major world, major world. He was there looking at a Hummer. 
He was looking to get a brand new Hummer. Why? Because they cut him that check. So the first, hey, when, when Jay come in the money, when they hit the lotto, one of the first places, they don't go to the supermarket. They go to the car dealership. They go to the car dealership and they look for a house. They live in their projects. They're looking for a house upstate somewhere. You know, somewhere in Westchester. They might go to Connecticut. They might go back down south. These are uh, Benjaminites. They'll come over here and make money. Whether they have a West Indian restaurant or a uh, or they dealing drugs or whatever the case may be, and they make so much money that they they build a mansion for cheap down there in Jamaica. Now I had picked up one individual, Benjamite brother, and we and I picked him up. I took him to the airport, and um, I in my mind I said this guy might be a he, he owns a Benjamite restaurant, right? So I said, well, what do you do for a living? Because he had a nice, I mean, he had a nice house in America, you know? And he said, I'm a, I am own, um, I think he said, five golden crusts. And one of the golden crusts that he owned, I used to go to all the time uh, on uh, White Plains, was that White Plains uh, Road in the Bronx. And he was one of the owners, so we were getting to talking. And he said, look, man, here's my number. Give me a call when you come down there. I'm going to get you free food. You know, we, 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 we like, you know, we chopped it up, you know. But anyway, this guy, and when he came out the car, I wanted to laugh because he had all the, the clothes that he had. He had like a Gucci bag. He had the, he, all the shit that he wore was stuff like his, the shirt that he wore had to be about $150, $500, the pants. He had these shoes. Design. Everything was designer, man. Everything was designer. And the dude was happy. Why? Because of the um, the delicacies. The, the Matter of fact, like I said, let me go ahead and let you hear this again. Strong's G, 4764, Strenas. 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 Which means delicacy, delicacy. It also means luxury or eager desire. You desire to get this, you know. Oh, he was telling me that his door, his door. He said, you want to know how much I paid for that door? He said $30,000 for the door of his house. And it, and it was an impressive door. So if he paid thirty thousand dollars for a, a door, what was the cost of the whole house? It had to be a couple million dollars. Then he was telling me about the founder that had committed suicide. He knew what he broke it down to me. I'm not going to tell you it's not important, but he 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 was suffering from a mental condition because he thought people were after him. And he said, "Man, he said you think I live good? The owner, oh my goodness." That man got a couple of houses in America. He got a couple of houses in Jamaica. You know, he was telling me of his of, of the wealth that he had. But anyway, the key word here is luxury, right? So let's deal with the word luxury. And then I'm, I'm going to close it. Okay, here we go. Okay, there's an article, uh, LeBron James admitted he was the cheapest player in the NBA. I'm not paying for it. Well, that's good, because he wanted to keep his money. That's that luxury. Don't let me go into Bag Bagwan Rashnis. Inside joke. Okay, so let's go to Google. Luxury. Let's look up the word luxury. Should I suppose it be somewhere, but luxury. The state of great comfort and extravagant living. He lived a life of luxury. 
as one famous Israelite said, you got to have the best. So he wanted luxury. And a lot of these people that sell out, they sell out. You know that they sold out when they when they pushing a Maybach or a, a uh, Lamborghini. You know, they're living in a... Oh, that happened to Comfy. Comfy was living a luxurious life. And the most I took his ass out. Just like the parable, oh fool, you thought that you were going to live. The, 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 the parable of the man that took, uh, broke down one bond and built big, a bigger bond. And the most I called him a fool. He said, don't you know that this is the night of your death? So you died, and you didn't you didn't uh, um, you didn't uh, benefit from them luxuries. Anyway, with that, I'm gonna say uh, shalom.